had just moved into the neighborhood and was uh, putting a picture up on the wall when all of a sudden this big explosion happened. And I thought maybe it was a car crash or something real close by the house or whatnot. So I look out the window and I see a big black SUV parked in, in the middle of the road blocking the road off. And so I was like, what's going on? So I, I, I run downstairs, look out the window and see a, uh, a SWAT team van with a SWAT guy you know, kneeling at the corner of it. My first thought was I need to grab my camera, I need to at least record this, and I need to do it live over the internet. SWAT team out there, baby. You know what's going on? What's going on? What's going on here? It's a drug raid. Did you see the guys marching down? They blew up the windows and everything. It's like terrorizing the neighborhood. Oh, that's Scared good. the hell out of me. Um, this is Chuck. I'm in New um, Manchester, New Hampshire, and on the corner of Bridge and Warren, the SWAT team just raided the next door neighbor's house. Uh, we heard a big explosion, and the dog started barking and went outside, and uh, they're in the house right now. I'll update as much as I can. Uh, I have a quick video going out right now. It's recording, and uh, we'll see what happens. Thanks. Please don't shoot any dogs. Please don't shoot any people. This was a calm neighborhood a few minutes ago. Oh, now the, the paddy wagon's here, the police van. They're bringing one person out in cuffs. It's the need for the masks. It's kind of scary. On the job, on the record. They got three guys in masks that just walked by. Yeah, I knew the cops and it, it was just strange because I couldn't identify them. One of my first thoughts was, what if one of these guys shoots somebody? I don't know who they were, you know? I don't know what agency they work for. They didn't have any markings at all. It was just, you know, that, was, that was kind of intimidating and kind of crazy to see. But They're kind of staying away from me because everybody knows I have the camera on. It's another person in cuffs. Definitely a drug raid. I talked to the guy in charge. It's got to be DEA. One of the neighbors came out and I, I was telling, trying to show her how this situation is a bad situation. I don't know, I think the, the bomb was a little over excessive and... Um, no, it was just a, um, like a mini hand grenade. <laughs> you want one of those going off in your house? I don't. It could be dealt with a lot better if uh, we had competition in the marketplace of, of police. You know how many of these things they've gotten wrong? They've gotten in the wrong house and hurt people? Yeah, sorry. And I, I don't know about you, but I didn't, I didn't see any violence going on. That, no. That, no, what it uh, is that, um, what he just told me that with the windows out, they just don't take any chances. They've, they've, they've shot little kids doing this stuff. Oh, Jesus, really? Oh, that's your friend? I don't know. This, this, it scares me more than anything. No, not me. <laughs> not a bit. During that conversation, she just seemed so happy that there were armed men breaking into somebody's house for um, interacting with people, basically. And, and yes, they say it was a, a drug dealer's house, but um, it's because you can't get those products in stores why people do it in their houses. I'm so glad. It's kind of funny, the guy that's head of the investigation, his last name is Coco. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I want to let you know I'm recording this call from my records. I was uh, hoping to get in touch with, uh, I believe it's Agent Coco from the uh, New Hampshire branch. One second. Thank you. Hi, my name is Pete Ayer. I'm recording this call from my records. This call is for uh, Mr. Coco who I believe uh, spearheaded a raid that happened on May 18th in Manchester near the corner of uh, Warren and Bridge Street. I was hoping Mr. Coco could give me a call. My number is 603. These people are way more dangerous than, than the people in the house, I'm sure. Potentially. But they're trained. 
Good job. I can sleep a little bit better now. <laughs> after the after the event, um, for a few days, it was high anxiety. Um, you know, just were they going to come back to the neighborhood? Were they going to come to somebody else's house? Did they get the wrong house? Maybe because I didn't see anything about it in the newspaper or um, any. I couldn't find any information on why they were raiding the house. So I just, I don't know. You, you never know when it's going to be you or you're the wrong, wrong house or anything. It was a high intensity situation. It's a no knock raid. Don't be afraid. We'll shoot your dogs in front of your kids Cause we are the SWAT We're here for your part And all the cash that you've got We are adrenaline junkies Taking orders from the top But as far as drugs, it, there there are problems with it uh, being out of people's houses, but that that's all related to it being illegal. If it were legal and available in the store, just like I can go buy a pack of cigarettes anytime or I can go buy alcohol anytime, then we wouldn't. We don't have those same problems. Police in Ogden, Utah, raided the home of 45-year-old Todd Blair in the middle of the night, reportedly while investigating his roommate. Police video, which we will show you in a moment, clearly shows what happened. The police burst in the home to find Mr. Blair standing inside the door with a golf club. And within seconds, and without a warning like drop your weapon or something like that, Police Sergeant Troy Burnett shot Mr. Blair three times directly, killing him instantly. We want to warn you, the video you are about to see is graphic and it is disturbing, but it is vital. So America sees what can happen to innocent people when the drug war goes terribly wrong. Take a look. Police, 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 We called the police department several times for an interview or a statement, but we're told no one could be provided because Mr. Blair's family has expressed an interest in suing the police. Yeah, the government can create jobs, it's these jobs, and you gotta pay for them, so I, I want less of that.